In this lecture I'm going to give you a brief overview of the P53 tumour suppressor gene and its role in cell cycle and also its role in apoptosis and we're going to cover how P53 is activated in response to either cell stress or DNA damage. So firstly P53 is a transcription factor so its job is to bind to the promoter regions of target genes and effectively switch on transcription of those genes. And it does this for a group of different uh, genes, genes that control cell cycle arrest, genes that control induction of apoptosis, and genes that control DNA repair pathways. P53 levels respond directly to double-strand DNA breaks, so damage to DNA. Um, so what happens is that DNA damage is recognised by a complex series of proteins that... Uh, act as a surveillance for DNA damage. If DNA damage is present, then P53 is activated. Since P53 is a transcription factor, it will then go on to switch on cell cycle arrest, because you don't want cells to, do, to divide if they've got DNA damage. It will induce apoptosis if the DNA damage signal persists long term. And whilst all this is going on, the DNA repair pathways are switched on. And basically the cell has a race against time. Can it repair its DNA damage? whilst the cell cycle is arrested before apoptosis kills the cell. So this slide shows what P53 is doing, how it's activated, how it is negatively regulated by MDM2, uh, and how it's degraded. So if we start off with P53 here, P53 is a tetrameric protein. Um, so it's four protein subunits stuck together. And it's initially made as an unphosphorylated version so this is represented here, and then when it's activated, it becomes phosphorylated, which is this version here. So when P53 is produced, it binds to its target gene, so cell cycle arrest, that could be the P21 gene, um, apoptosis, that is typically the Bax gene, and various DNA damage um, or DNA repair genes. There's an additional gene that it activates, which is the MDM2 gene. Uh, and the MDM2 gene codes for MDM2 protein. And MDM2 protein is what we call a ubiquitin ligase, an E3 ubiquitin ligase. The job of an E3 ubiquitin ligase is to bind to a specific protein, in this case P53, in its unphosphorylated form. MDM2 binds to it and then tags the P53 protein with ubiquitin, which is a small, a small protein, and a polyubiquitinated protein is a tag, which means that that protein is destined for the cytoplasmic proteasome, which is an organelle that effectively shreds this protein and degrades it. So what you can see is that P53 activates its own negative regulator, MDM2. MDM2 inactivates newly formed P53, and P53 levels oscillate every few hours. So a bit of P53 is produced, produces a bit of MDM2, which gets rid of that P53. So P53 is present in a surveillance mode, uh, waiting for a signal, which is DNA damage, and then it can become more stabilised. So in here we've got a little box that says DNA damage. Typically double strand and single strand DNA breaks, but it can be other forms of DNA damage. These forms of DNA damage activate these um, enzymes. These are all kinases, check 2 kinase, ATM and ATR. ATM ataxia telangiectasia mutated. ATR is ATM related. So these phosphorylate P53. Now, if you notice, P53 here is unphosphorylated. Here it's phosphorylated. Whenever it's unphosphorylated, MDM2 can degrade it. When it's phosphorylated, that is when DNA damage occurs, MDM2 can no longer bind to it because this phosphorylation is blocking the MDM2 binding. So if P53 is unphosphorylated, MDM2 can get rid of it. If P53 is phosphorylated, MDM2 cannot get rid of it, and therefore P53 is stabilised with an increased half-life. This causes increased expression of the P53 response genes, P21, backs and the DNA repair enzymes. Also that causes further increase of MDM2, however MDM2 
can't um, inactivate uh, P53 if P53 is phosphorylated. There's a further block on this negative feedback loop. The CHECK2 ATM and ATR group of enzymes can phosphorylate MDM2 on the region that binds to P53, so this inactivated form of MDM2 cannot bind unphosphorylated P53. So then we have to think what happens when DNA damage signals recede, as in the DNA damage has been repaired. In that situation, CHECK2 ATM and ATR are now inactive, all newly produced P53 is unphosphorylated. Any residual phosphorylated P53 can still induce MDM2. That newly produced MDM2 is unphosphorylated at this point here. Um, now, confusingly, MDM2 can re receive an activating mutation, and not an activating mutation, an activating phosphorylation here, but that's caused by uh, proliferative growth factor signaling, so just ignore that for now. But anyway, unphosphorylated MDM2 at this point here can now bind unphosphorylated P53, which is now being made, and then all of that newly produced P53 can be degraded by the cytoplasmic proteasome. That means that the phosphorylated P53 can still be hanging around. However, over time, the levels of this will decrease. So the net effect of repairing DNA damage is eventually P53 levels will return to normal. Therefore, P21 levels will return to normal, Bax levels will start to decrease, and the cell won't undergo apoptosis, and the DNA repair enzymes and proteins are no longer overexpressed. So if we look at what Bax is actually doing when Bax is overexpressed by P53, uh, Bax is a key mediator of the intrinsic mitochondrial apoptotic pathway. On the mitochondrial membrane, there's a protein called BCL2. BCL2 binds to Bax. Now, when Bax levels exceed BCL2 levels, Bax will oligomerize, that is, lots of proteins stick together and form channels in the outer membrane of the mitochondria. These channels allow the contents of the intermembrane space to be released, and that includes cytochrome C and procaspase 9. When procaspase 9 and cytochrome C are released from this intermembrane space into the cytosol, they will connect up with another protein called APAF1, and that will result in active procaspase 9, and then procaspase 9 will initiate caspase-mediated cell death. Now, P53 also induces uh, P21 expression, and P21 is a cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitory protein. So cyclin-dependent kinases bind to cyclins. Um, if we look at the G1S boundary, this will be cyclin E, and this will be CDK2. Um, even though cyclin E is present and CDK2 is active, overexpression of P21 which is very similar to P27 in structure, will bind to this complex and inactivate uh, cyclin-dependent kinase activity, stopping the cell from progressing through the R point of the cell cycle. Now this can also happen with cyclin A, C, D, K um, complexes as well, so that can stop the cell cycle within S phase. And this is pretty much what we want to do if a cell is undergoing DNA uh, replication, a mistake has been made, and we need to stop the cell cycle. So in summary, P53 helps to orchestrate some of the apoptotic signaling. Primarily, it orchestrates the intrinsic pathway, which is the mitochondrial pathway. Uh, this slide is a glossary of terms uh, related to both intrinsic and extrinsic apoptosis. But what we're dealing with here is that P53 detects DNA damage signals. Uh, P53 is stable by ATM-mediated phosphorylation. That P53 is unable to be degraded by MDM2. Therefore, we get more P53 expression. The result of that is P53 induces uh, Bax expression, which is a proapoptotic protein that causes cytochrome C release um, and activation of caspase 9 in the end. And P53 also induces P21, which induces cell cycle arrest. So what you now need to think about is what happens if a cell loses the ability to produce P53. And this occurs in many cancer cells. So cancer cells will become mutant for P53 and this DNA 
damage recognition pathway no longer functions correctly. Now P53 is not the only thing that becomes mutated in cancer. Uh, so if we imagine we can take out the P53 gene, we lose all of this uh, cycle. We don't get the P53 response genes expressed. Alternatively, in uh, cancer cells, you sometimes lose the ATM and the ATR or CHECK2 genes, so that no longer activates uh, P53 in the presence of DNA damage. Alternatively, some cancer cells overexpress MDM2, so that as soon as P53 is produced, it's immediately degraded by the proteasome, and that results in the cell which is P53 deficient. Alternatively, other cancer cells uh, do things like uh, mutate in the P21 gene, so that even if P53 is functional, P21 cannot be expressed in response to DNA damage, and therefore the DNA damaged cell will continue to enter M phase and uh, undergo mitosis. And then other tumours might inactivate BACS production, so that even if P53 is proficient, if BACS is inactive, the uh, cell can no longer uh, undergo normal apoptosis. So what you can see is that P53 is central to both cell cycle regulation and apoptosis regulation. It regulates apoptosis in normal cells and there are numerous ways in which the P53 pathway and its associated proteins can become defective in disease situations, typically cancer.